Because our project is within the first 25 uh, meters uh, from surface down to 25 meters of radius of official deposit, our cost came in at just over $16 a pound. And when we compare this to other producers around the world, we very much compare with what's happening in Kazakhstan, some of the lowest producer cost producers in the world. So this is an extremely competitive project. Hello and welcome to Assay TV. I'm hosting Nico Kakos, who is president and CEO of Blue Sky Uranium. And Blue Sky Uranium are an exploration company with significant assets in Argentina. Nico, welcome back on Assay TV. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. Thank you very much. So um, could you give us an overview of the nuclear power sector to start with, particularly in Argentina and the overall demand for uranium at the moment? Oh, absolutely. Uh, in Argentina, I think most investors don't realize that Argentina is indeed a nuclear country. They've been uh, in the nuclear business since the early 50s, almost as long as the United States has been in the nuclear business and the UK for that matter. Um, so they have a fairly well-developed nuclear uh, industry there. They're, as- they're involved in every aspect uh, of the nuclear cycle. Um, they've got nuclear reactors, they've got research reactors, they've got pilot enrichment plants, they can enrich their own fuel. In fact, even the president of the International Atomic Energy is an Argentinian, which is a tip of the hat to, to the uh, sophistication, I suppose, to, of uh, Argentine nuclear sector. And that's important for us because, you know, as we have a uranium project that's moving forward, as we move it towards uh, production, um, the country doesn't need to invent and implement uh, new nuclear uh, handling rules and, 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 and all the regulations are already in place. Legislation doesn't need to do anything. So it's and they're quite well adept at that and quite used to it. So the only thing that Argentina doesn't have is the production of uranium. They used to produce uranium, but since the 90s, they have not been producing any uranium. So because they have a nuclear need, they need they ha- they import all their, their uh, uranium fuel. And most of it uh, comes from Kazakhstan, and they actually pay a real premium. They pay between 65 to $85 a pound to import uh, that uranium, which is significantly above the 45 day, $45 uh, the spot price. Uh, of uranium. And this is what creates a very unique opportunity for Blue Sky as our mm-hmm. project in Argentina is the largest and most advanced in that country right now. We have an opportunity to be the first uh, supplier of, for domestic f- uranium fuel for Argentina. Fantastic. So that's the utilities companies that are importing all of this uranium. So you're in, uh, you framed it well there. You're in a good position. Um, that's right. So Let's think more about your projects then um, and what's going on there. You've produced a PA on the Amarillo Grande project. Um, what are your costs of production and you know, how, you, how do you anticipate uh, the price and quality of the product uh, being applicable for, for the Argentinian market as you've framed previously? Yeah, no, we have a very, very excellent and very unique project. In fact, our project has a district scale qualities. Uh, it's the the tenements, I guess the land package is over 300,000 hectares of land, which to put into perspective, it's a, it's a corridor of about 145 kilometers long by 50 kilometers wide. It's, it's an enormous sector. And we've worked on this uh, over the course of the fa- past 15 years. And it wasn't until just a couple of years ago uh, that we did our first PEA to really get a handle on, okay, that was at a time when Uranium was trading at sub $20 a pound. We're thinking, do we have a product here that could be competitive in that environment at that time? So we did our PEA and we really looked at two metrics. Number one, we looked at, okay, what would it cost to build a plant even at an early stage? At that time, we identified just under 23 million pounds of uranium and just 11 and a half million pounds of vanadium. So the cost came in at around 100 million pounds. And, and that number is significant because as we uh, discover new uh, uranium <clears throat> uh, pounds sort of in the area within a 30 kilometer radius, um, we wouldn't have to, that wouldn't affect the cap expenditures that much, the cap costs. The second as- aspect was, okay, now what does it cost to bring out actually a, a single pound of uranium? And because our project is within the first 
25 uh, meters uh, from surface down to 25 meters is really a surficial deposit. Our cost came in at just over $16 a pound. And when we compare this to other producers around the world, we very much compare with what's happening in Kazakhstan, some of the lowest producer cost producers in the world. So this is an extremely competitive project. So all our efforts now are really focused on finding additional deposits. And we've got ongoing drill programs that, whose objective is to do exactly that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hone in on that. So you've got some um, some um, results that you're waiting from back from the assay labs, and you're also expanding the resource or trying to expand it further with the drilling. Take us through um, what you're waiting for, and also the future drilling campaign. Of course. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we the the first deposit that we've already identified is called the Ivana deposit, and then. Within uh, a radius of about 30 kilometers, we've identified four other targets that we feel have uh, geological similarities, very similar to the Ivana deposit, and all our preliminary studies seem to indicate that. So we've announced initially a 4,500 meter drill program to start drilling these additional four areas, and that's currently ongoing. And then it was just late in the fall, we announced an additional 3,500 meters for the Ivana deposit itself. The objectives there were twofold. Number one, to tighten the drilling to improve the quality of the resource. And number two, to step out because we feel there's definitely room for expansion of that resource as well. Those results have been shipped to the lab, I think, since uh, November. And uh, the labs uh, are from Argentina to Vancouver. It took a long time to come. The, the supply chain issues have created a real issue uh, yeah. you know, for mining companies as well. But uh, we expect those results to, to, to be released to us imminently, and we're eagerly awaiting for it. So I think any day now, uh, we could be in a position where we could be announcing our first drill results. And I think that's going to be a real game changer, because as we announce new results, uh, and, and hopefully our deposit continues to grow, I think this is where uh, the value of the company sits at an inflection point where it could you know, seriously be revalued. And you know, I'm hoping for the upside, of course. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Certainly a lot to be watching out for, um, for those asset results coming back. And it's timed very well with the way the uranium market and the price is moving as well. Um, just on that um, trajectory then, you know, how, has, um, you know, how long do you think it's going to be before you start supplying the domestic Argentinian market, if you can put a time frame on that? Well, uh, it, it's it's conceptual at this point. I think we're continuing with our drilling. I expect the, us to continue with the drilling well into the second quarter of this year. At that point, we're going to start shifting the project to into a pre into a pre feasibility study. And that pre feasibility study will take uh, us all the way until the end of the year, maybe the the first quarter of 2023. And at that point. The, you know, depending on the outcome of that, that's really uh, where a production decision will, can be made. Um, if, a, if a decision is made to go forward, then going forward, I could see within a year and a half, the company potentially could be in a situation where it could be in production. It's a very straightforward production process. Um, this is uh, more like a sand quarry rather. There's no blasting or drilling required. So it's a very straightforward situation is just getting getting the permitting and uh and and moving ahead yep absolutely and um just thinking beyond the argentinian market obviously there's a great strategy there but do you have the optionality to export elsewhere do you have is it, is it part of your your plan or, or a plan b absolutely i think i think even at this early stage uh we're of just under 23 million pounds our pea envisioned uh enough uranium uh, production to more than amply supply the Argentines, you know, Argentina's domestic needs, we would definitely be in a situation where we would net exporters. Mm, excellent. Okay, so just for viewers and investors uh, for to watch out for the next steps, you've got assay results coming back quite soon. Any other key milestones in the near term? I think assay results and uh, the assay results from various targets I think it's going to indicate uh, the scalability of the project and uh, how quickly we can grow it. And I think that's going to be a very, very exciting phase for uh, of the company. Yep, certainly. Excellent. Okay, Nikos, very good to speak with you. It's exciting times. Really uh, good to get an overview of the Argentinian market as well as where you're positioned internationally. Um, and thanks for speaking with us, ATV. We look forward to catching up throughout the year. I do as well. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.